Welcome to CivilNet. Today is September 21, Armenia's Independence Day, uh, 24 years of independence. Uh, joining me in the studio to talk about this very special day is the president of the American University of Armenia, Dr. Armen Der Gyurgyan. Dr. Der Gyurgyan, thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, this is a, a, a multiple celebration for CivilNet and for the American University. Not only is it Armenia's independence, it is the fourth anniversary of CivilNet's establishment. And yet more importantly, and perhaps more uh, symbolically, it is the day that uh, the American University was established. So the AUA is as old as the Republic of Armenia. How does that make you feel? Yes, that's true. To the day, it's as old as the Republic of Armenia. Of course, uh, as an Armenian, I'm very happy for today. It's a happy day for all Armenians because uh, it's the independence of the Republic. But it just happens that the university opened its doors exactly on the day when the uh, parliament declared independence. So we are as old as the university. Uh, so we are not celebrating, we don't have particular events because there's so much going on that uh, it's uh, impossible to have another event. Uh, I feel very happy and very proud of uh, the reality of the university. 24 years ago we started at a very, very difficult time uh, in terms of conditions in Armenia. Thank God the conditions have improved a lot and the university has grown by leaps and bounds. Uh, we started with uh, 100 students and uh, today we have 1,600 students in eight graduate degree programs, three undergraduate degree programs. Our hallways are filled with young people, very happy, very smiling and busy studying. If you go to the library, it's just packed. Uh, so, tremendous 24 years. You were um, one of the founding fathers of uh, the American University um, at a time when you said Armenia was facing great challenges and yet you believed in it. You believed in, 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 in the possibility. Um, we were speaking earlier about hope and disenchantment. Uh, do you see hope for Armenia? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I see a lot of hope for Armenia. Uh, and it's primarily in the, the young generation. You know, 24 years is not very long for any country to establish itself, to uh, make big progress. Uh, just imagine the uh, people who were teenagers or they were just born around that time. They are not 24, at most 30 years old. Our own graduates uh, from the university are really not that advanced in age, so uh, you, you don't expect in 24 hours a country to turn around. We really need a new generation to mature and take hold of the country. And so one needs to be patient. Uh, but there are many signs, I think, that uh, the country has changed enormously and has advanced. In spite of the difficulties, I, I don't want to minimize the difficulties, but there are many, many signs. I, I was here in the summer of 91, and then I came back in the winter of 92. I can just say the conditions were horrible, uh, including in the university. There was no electricity, there was no water, uh, there was no transportation. Our students, the 100, uh, students that we had, they were living in the, essentially many of them were living there because they, they had no means of going back and forth to their home. And if they went home, there was no light to study, there was no heat. In the university, in some rooms, we had some conditions. What a change compared to now. Um, so people living here may not realize that uh, change is happening because it happens so slow they don't see it. but. Uh, if you make uh, comparisons, there's tremendous difference that has happened, a tremendous improvement. Um, as an educator, as a president of a forward-looking uh, institution of higher education, um, what are the sectors 
in Armenia's economy that you see sh um, the country's government, the people should be focusing on that, that promises to be able to lift Armenia uh, up and make it a more sort of viable, uh, economically viable country? Well, um, Armenia, of course, everybody has been saying this, and I agree that uh, knowledge-based and more um, uh, sectors that make use of the intelligence of people, depend on it, are the, the ones that will excel in Armenia. And the, the, there's also good evidence of that already in the short time. Uh, for example, the technology, information technology sector has become very successful. Today, there's need for several thousand employees if they can find. We are at the university, uh, we have uh, computational sciences as an undergraduate. First year we admitted 40 students, second year 80 students, this year we've admitted 120 students. And when we graduate, we cannot uh, fill in all the need that exists. So uh, that sector is growing very, very nicely, I think. And there are some major successes in that field. Uh, again, probably others have mentioned um, uh, Pixar, for example, uh, that three of the top founders or graduates of AUL, I must stress, uh, are, uh, is, uh, is something that is completely homegrown and it is now a very highly respected product uh, all over the world. Uh, there are others. Uh, we were talking earlier about shadow magic. Uh, there are, uh, so this is, and, and the, the good news is uh, there are hundreds of startups, small, one, two, three people doing something. Many of them will fail, but a few need to succeed. And then these few, for example, Pixar has hundreds of employees now. Those that succeed, then they will need uh, people working for them. Uh, so this trend of now uh, startups, small, young people getting together and uh, creating something new uh, that would be of demand worldwide. Not They're not doing this for sure. Armenia's market, very small market. You know, during the Soviet time, everything was sort of handed out to people. People were expecting the government to do, to decide what they study and where they work. Uh, you know, everything was given out. Things have changed. Uh, people in Armenia have to understand that it's up to them. They have the challenge of being creative, you know, going, doing things on their own. They cannot expect handouts. It's, it's a new paradigm. And uh, this is where education is extremely critical. Uh, uh, you know, at AUA we uh, stress the American educational approach that uh, students are very much responsible for their education. It's not like they come and receive information and, and sort of absorb the information. That's not how it works. They really have to work. They have to exp be uh, very active in formulating their own ideas, expressing them, writing them, speaking, uh, doing projects, creative projects. It's, and I, I tell our students uh, on the matriculation just a few days ago that that they are more than 50% of the educational process. Uh, it's an interaction between them, the faculty, the researchers, the other students. This interactive environment is the one that we create, and then, but students really have the responsibility to do. And that's what we are trying to uh, teach, and, and also the idea of teaching them how to learn. Uh, we, no university can teach the students everything that they need to go to a job and immediately use it. That's not going to happen. Uh, they go to a new job, they have to learn what is needed, and so what we are t teaching them how to learn. So this process takes time. And these kids have to learn that and they have to go out and practice. And that is what will transform 
the country, I think. That's why education is so critical, particularly in this transition period. You need this new generation to come in with their new uh, skills and uh, creativity and take the challenge for building a new nation. Well, that leads into my final question, and you, you articulated it, but perhaps you can say it in a different way. Today, um, for Armenia's independence, what would be the one message that you would give to your students at the American University today? I would say go forward. <laughs> be, um, take the challenge uh, and be creative. Uh, don't expect uh, that somebody will pave the way for you. You have to build a road. You have to build uh, the path and uh, your, your own future. And, you know, I'm not saying everybody has to be patriotic and, and, and build the country. No, build your own future. Thereby you build the country. That's how it happens. Just uh, imagine, imagine that in this time of globalization, uh, internet, connections, with it doesn't matter where you are. Uh, you can do things that reaches the whole world and uh, you can do it by being in your homeland but uh, you've got to be creative, you've got to be uh, able to take the challenge and uh, fight and go forward. Don't expect uh, the university or the country or your family or just hand it in it tray, silver tray to you. You have to work hard. And that's how it, it has happened in everywhere that there has been success. Yeah. Take the challenge. Take that's the challenge. Slogan for the new century that we have now entered. Dr. Yes. Dergüler, and thank you so much. Happy Independence Day. Happy Independence Day to you as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm.